थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ थैंक यू गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल आई डॉक्टर रवि गौडी ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ ओकार्ड वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस वेबिनार ऑन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक दैट इज रोल ऑफ टेरी पैराटाइड इन ऑस्टिफोरसिस मैनेजमेंट एंड टूडे we have a uh, researcher uh, orthopedic surgeon uh, and um, very importantly a very senior uh, consultant uh, with us uh, to deliver uh, the talk on the topic so i will take a uh, immense pleasure while introducing him so uh, dr uh, jawahar tulsidas uh, jetfa uh, is an orthopedic surgeon who has completed uh, ms in uh, 1983 so it's uh, 40 years of practice wisdom and experience that is uh, that uh, he will be sharing uh, with us uh, he is consulting orthopedic surgeon at uh, amdabad since 1984 uh, he is associate uh, professor or of orthopedics at amc mit medical college amdabad and chairman of it and uh, web committee of the indian orthopedic association he developed the first windows based medical practice software in 1996 nowadays uh, everybody is using software to manage patients and to manage practice but uh, he is pioneer in this field and uh, he is recognized and qualified faculty of uh, ntmc uh, then he has many achievements uh, to his credit uh, like uh, best paper prize uh, on uh, osteosynthesis by epox uh, resin then he has also uh, designed uh, uh, many uh, devices uh, uh, like a uh, new external fixator shaping press amdabad bolt and uh, all these innovations and devices are really making a change in patient's life so he is most result oriented and rewarding uh, this uh, most uh, result oriented and rewarding modifications in implant and its technique uh, is helping patient Uh, he is chief medical researcher and advisor of drug eluting orthopedic implants uh, presented many talks and uh, he has uh, many publications to his credit so uh, i invite uh, dr jawahar uh, jaitwa uh, from amdabad uh, for this uh, interesting topic discussion i will request uh, all the attendees uh, uh, to put their uh, uh, questions uh, in q uh, in chat box or or q and a box and uh, at the end of session we will take all these questions uh, with sir so i stop here and uh, uh, i welcome all the participating uh, orthopedic surgeons and uh, i welcome uh, dr jawahar jetwa for uh, delivery uh, for delivery of his talk so over to you sir thank you very much for so nice introduction of me and i really feel honored to be with you to share the whatever the knowledge i have about the terry peritoneal in osteoporosis management oh, we know that what is osteoporosis basically low bone mass and microarticular deterioration and increase in bone fragility the problem is that it can go for a fracture that is a susceptibility and the load is very high 61 million almost 80% of the women are probably having osteoporosis in menopausal age after menopausal age so that is the recent publication we got so what is the challenge challenge to clinicians is basically they are asymptomatic until fracture occurs and even when the fracture occurs you it is not say very well detected like vertebral fractures so to identify the patient they are at high risk or they are suffering from osteoporosis is a big challenge and to find out the and prevent the first fracture is again a big challenge so that is the main topic of today's discussion another very important fact is that the difference between osteomalacia and osteoporosis is very important but there is a volume change in case of a malacia and volume is not change and there is a less mineral contents like whatever you have constructed instead of using cement you have used more of a sand that type of a construction while in osteoporosis the bone tissue is reduced 
but the structure point of view it is okay but it is reduced because of the trabecular thinning so that is the difference one more difference is that in malaysia there is a defective mineralization there is a proximal uh, myopathy painful bones while in osteoporosis there is a defective bone formation it may remain asymptomatic until there is a fracture one more difference is that evenly distributed abnormalities and vertebral shape in case of uh, osteomalacia particularly lumbar spine and there is a biconcave deformity of the all vertebras but here it is one or more abnormal vertebra not all of them are going to have this deshaping and it is more affecting the thoracic spine so how do we diagnose this osteoporosis basically it is now world over accepted to use dexa bmd scan where you are going to get all these types of graph where the green part is good better more you go to the red part especially score minus 2.5 less than that is a pakka case of osteoporosis so what is the epidemiology 8 to 62% of the women 30% above postmenopausal even in males it is from 9 to 25% above age of 50 years where the hip fractures are more common in female and we have a load of 6000 hip fractures in 2020 which may go up to over 1 million maybe i mean 6 lakhs but it may go over 1 million in 2050 why it is so why urban people are getting more osteoporosis because of the sedentary life increased indoor living less of sun exposures and very importantly they do not know that there is a disease called osteoporosis only 10 to 15% are aware of osteoporosis and again we have a problem of availability of the dexa machine where we require about 2.6 machines in per million population we have hardly 0.26 so that is too low but now what can be done so there are some non modifiable risk factors where we can think about uh, uh, for the primary osteoporosis like age sex ethnicity genetics we know that in female it is more and <clears throat> the peak bone mineral density may be different depending on that uh, geographical locations or those ethnic tribes but modifiable risk factors we know nutrition we can take care calcium intake vitamin d lifestyle smoking alcohol all these things using some good medications you definitely can avoid primary osteoporosis what we need to do when we think about osteoporosis what are the investigations like cbc and calcium and phosphate and alkaline phosphate kidney function test liver function test vitamin d3 i mean hydroxy vitamin level and the thyroid and parathyroid level but very importantly some of the secondary osteoporosis where we require esr iga we require serum testosterone depending on the disease cushing's disease we require overnight dexamethasone suppression test diabetes mellitus where we require all these things now <coughs> sorry what are the key indications for initiating anti osteoporotic therapy any of such fracture is the hint that patient is not only having a fracture there could be a osteoporosis as well so it may be vertebral fracture or non vertebral fracture more than 50 years of age where the t score is less than minus 2.5 osteopenia and when a frax frax is a something is a tool where you calculate when it is uh, out 10 years probability is a major uh, indication of osteoporosis and of course those patients who are having diabetes mellitus you should be more careful now pharmacological management of osteoporosis what we need is to maintain d3 level higher dose of vit d vitamin d because in case of obesity malabsorption other individuals which we require a good number i mean good amount of vitamin d3 we may go beyond 30 nanogram we go up to an aim at around 50 nanogram that is very important plus dietary intake 1000 mg per day especially when the age is more than 50 years limit alcohol i would not say limit i would say no alcohol no alcohol stop smoking active lifestyle weight bearing exercise balancing exercise and very important is please educate on reducing the risk of falls particularly among older patients and take all care of a good illumination a good floor all those things to prevent falls now what is this prevalent vertebral fractures 
these are the cases where you go for some investigation from some other disease, but incidentally, you find out in the CT scan that there is a prevalent vertebral fracture where there is some difference in the height interior and posteriorly, where you go for a teriparatide and also intravenous uh, zolendronic acid, plus some oral biphosphonate, or whenever there is an indication, you can add with dunosumab. Regarding hip fractures, yes. Teriparatide enhances the healing where you can give intravenous hyaluronic press or post-surgical patients, hip fracture, where you try to give this zolendroic acid before patient is discharged. So you know very well it has been given under the medical supervision. And it may be effective in some of the cases, it may not be required, but depending on the judgment of the patient's conditions. Now, what are the therapeutic options of osteoporosis? We have got anti-resorptive drugs that decreases the bone resorption and bone density, which increases, which goes with the um, uh, 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 regeneration, where we can go up to that for two to three years, and then there is a play to, and then again, <clears throat> uh, we have to watch the patients, but overall it reduces the risk fracture, uh, risk of the fracture by 50%. Calcitonin, we know, the only thing which we have to need to know is that there is a side effects of nausea, flushing, diarrhea, and nasal discomfort, which we have to be very careful. Regarding the biphosphonate, it is block, blocking bone resorption. So what you are doing is you are not regenerating, you are blocking resorption. So the point with biphosphonate is that there is, there is a possibility of poor patient's compliance. But it reduces the fracture rates by 50 to 70 in vertebral and about 20 to 30 in non vertebral and around 40 in hip fractures. When it is interspersed with a drug holiday of one to two years to minimize the risk of atypical fracture, um, femoral fracture, which is again a very untoward or unpleasant uh, effect of biphosphonate. And we have the number of biphosphonate, alendronate, risodronate, abendronate, and zolendronate. But there are some problems with all this biphosphonate. What we need to understand is that there could be some adverse effect, but majority of them is having a gastrointestinal symptoms, atypical femoral fractures, and osteonecrosis, which is very rare only in the literature. But atypical femoral fracture is something which we have to be very much careful about. Regarding donosubab, yes, potentially inhibits osteoclast development and activity. It is given subcutaneously every six months. But what is very important to understand for Dinosubab is that there is a pronounced loss of anti-resorptive effect after from seven months after the last injection. And this is the photograph I could get from internet, this is from Cleveland uh, Clinical Journal, where after cessation of dinosumab, they got this type of fractures again. So this is a horrible thing. There could be a rebound vertebral fractures. So we need to be careful. Sometimes it is recommended to give lifetime. Now, regarding these two, the anti-resorptive as well as the anabolic, we prefer anabolic agents. There are so many things which are there, but yet there is a place for anti-resorptive as well. Now, what is this teriparatide? Is it parathyroid hormone or it is something else which is given as a name recombinant? So recombinant means that they are using part of parathyroid hormone, which is up to first 34 um, chain. So what exactly if I want to mimic uh, by animation, this is the way, this is the whole parathyroid hormone where you try to erase all these chains and leave only 34. So one to 34 terminal fragments is left and that is called teriparatide. So what we do is we are using parathyroid but for particular purpose, we are removing all those chains. So when there is a cell membrane osteoblast, there is an activity where there are parathyroid hormone receptors where you give this teriparatide. It goes and it, it creates all these uh, different types of um, chemicals. Ultimately, it goes with increase in growth factors. And that's why there is increase in number of osteoblasts, decrease in osteoblast apoptosis, increase in bone formation and improve the cortical and trabecular structure, which is something very, very uh, uh, impressive and very, very well accepted by all the orthopedic surgeons all over the world. 
Now, mechanism of action, as I told you, it is very simple in the same way. The high immunity for the membrane and uh, the bone marker can occur earlier than increase in bone resorption. So, something like anabolic window we are getting when we are using anabolic uh, uh, agents like teriparatide. There could be some problem with the level of calcium when we use teriparatide. There can be a transient increase, but ultimately it goes to baseline in another 16 to 24 hours of each dose. So there is nothing to worry about the calcium level. Now, this is a good study which says, I mean, 1637 menop postmenopausal cases where teriparatide is given up to 24 months with uh, comparing with the uh, placebo. So new vertebral fracture were found 14% placebo, but only 5% when it has been used with teriparatide. And new non vertebral fragility fractures were 6% six in, uh, 6 in placebo, but only 3% in teriparatide. But regarding this paper says regarding the 20 and 40 microgram, it says that 40 microgram per day is not an approved dose as it had similar effects of 20 microgram, but is more likely to have adverse effects. So 20 is okay, no need to go for 40. Now effect of teriparatide on bone density in man. So after 12 months of teriparatide, what has happened? It has increased 5.9% to 9% of the baseline compared to placebo. This is again a very interesting in man with osteoporosis, where if you see the, the red bar is, is something where uh, the incident and on the other side is a white bar. So if you can see, there is hardly any problem once teriparatide has been given. There can be a prevalent fractures or can be no prevalent fractures. In case of a prevalent fracture also, there is a less occurrence of another fracture One, it has been given with a teriparatide. This is a big study of 4,102 patients. And they say that compared to alendronate, that is by first minute, teriparatide can reduce the rate of new vertebral fractures, which is very, very important. So ultimately, it is more towards building up of the bone rather than blocking the bone resorptions. Another uh, study says, says that when there is an osteoporosis because of the glucocorticoid induced, then also compared to uh, alendronate, it increases the lumbosacral bone mineral density phenomenally. And there is no significant difference in the incidence of non vertebral fracture and adverse events between these two groups. So regarding the other part, the, the paper is very clear that there is not a sufficient evidence to show the difference. Now, where can we give teriparatide? So approved indications in all patients, I mean, not in pediatric adults and old age and postmenopausal women, but there are potential indications where there is a risk of fracture because of the osteoporosis for patients who have fractures despite anti resorptive therapy and multiple fragility fractures, which you can see incidentally while treating other conditions. Duration could be up to 24 months and anabolic effects evident within first three months. And those we know is always 20 microgram irrespective of the weight of the patients. The contraindication is pre-existing hypercalcemia, severe renal impairment or skeletal malignancy or metabolic diseases like hyperparathyroidism, but very important for all of you and for us is that please see that it has been stored well. Once open, the product may be stored for maximum of 28 days at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. The shelf life is only two years. So that also is one thing that you should discard regarding the storage. Now, let me tell you about that. What has happened with the fracture management when we talk about teriparatide? Fracture management has been long ago, has been started with only plasters, but then an era of rigid fixation came, then stable fixation, then flexible fixation, then biological fixation. And now I'm also propagating this terminology called happy fixation. But in all that, when the union is not in time, we can use teriparatide. That is a recombinant parathyroid. These are the cases where I have done bilateral uh, total hip replacement and inadvertently I broke the subtrochanteric area where I again operated and uh, encircled this. It was not uniting, but then after giving teriparatide for three months, 
this is the result. It has gone for a very good union. Another case of 42 years, the wife, professor, wife of a professor of pharmacology who goes into great details of this particular molecule, a multifragmentary femoral fracture, which was not uniting even after 12 weeks. And we did bone grafting, there was no result, but at the end of six months and thereafter giving teriparatide at nine months, it has started uniting. And this is after one month of post-teriparatide. And at the end of 11 months, we can see a solid union. And this is a purely, I would say, because of teriparatide. Another case of reverse active fractures, but it is very difficult in particular in obese patient, and this is after giving the repetitide up to six months, it has united very well without loss of fixation. Another case where there was some loss of fixation, the VFN2 has given way, it has lost its original place, but we continue it only with the teriparatide. And in that mal position of the implant also, it went into a good union and it united in five months. So there are a number of publications which are there regarding use of teriparatide in fractures. And some of them are very challenging and very exciting where we can use this molecule. Uh, a small note about the fracture that it is a statistically robust fracture risk prediction tool developed by WHO. It combines BMD plus clinical risk factors to predict the fracture risk better than any other, I mean, either alone. And it predicts 10 years probability of major osteoporotic fractures, particularly hip spine wrist and humerus. So this can be used and it is good to use this. Now, where do you not prescribe teriparatide? Again, to re-emphasize, not in pediatric, Paget's disease, hyperparathyroidism, prior urotherapy, bone tumors, active or recent urolithiasis, patients on digitalis drug, renal impairment, pregnancy, lactation, pre-existing hypercalcium and elevations of alkaline phosphatase. Now, what are the published side effects of teriparatide? There could be transient episodes of orthostatic hypotension, which is very important. Other things may be encountered in so many other medicines. But here it is very important. If patient says about lack cramps, yes, we have to think of. And dizziness, again, is a common side effect which has been published, so be careful. All other things are there, maybe minor, which can be uh, tackled well. Now, there are some of the atypical information of teriparatide. Like, one thing is that it is not parathyroid, it is only 1 to 34 chain recombinant. Another is it is injected initially in a supine or sitting position to avoid hypotension, which is very important. We must give this instruction. Safety efficiency not evaluated beyond two to three years, that is what we know as, as on today. Mint serum uric acid may go up to 13 to 20%. It is not a sequelae. Transient hypercalcemia may be there. High continuous dose is catabolic, very, very important. Instead of one, they give more than 20, they give 60 microgram. Then what will happen? Instead of anabolic, it will go for catabolic. And those 20 milligram daily, irrespective of age and weight, weight that is something which is another phenomenal research that there is no difference with the height and weight of the patient. Uh, now, role of uh, teriparatide in osteoporosis management, let me go ahead. I mean, uh, so what I was just wanted to discuss about the specific aspect is not regarding osteoporosis only, but at the same time for the fractures. So this is a good molecule where it is not right for the lifetime, but this is the molecule, molecule where we know we need to use it judiciously, but we need to find out the best of the indications. But I have seen the patients that in, when the patient is bedridden because of osteoporosis, when we give teriparatide, not only the bone aspect, but also this whole musculoskeletal system, including muscles and everything, when it is combined with vitamin D3, they start walking. They get somewhere some energy. So that is something which is predominantly we are finding out. And uh, uh, we are very happy with this particular molecule and we can get uh, so many good uh, smiles on the patients where we think now they are very much, uh, uh, you know, weak bone and weak uh, uh, stretcher. All those cases, we have got a best of this molecule, which is a boon for us. So I thank you very much for your kind attentions. And this is what I just wanted to share. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for this uh, enlightening uh, presentation. And uh, it was full of insights as well as some real-time cases. So uh, I really thank you uh, on the behalf of uh, Vocard uh, for uh, this wonderful lecture, who are makers of Teritite, which is Periteritite. And we uh, recently launched uh, this product uh, in Indian market. And um, now uh, we will move towards uh, our uh, discussion and uh, question and answers. Uh, so as uh, uh, you said uh, that and we presented, uh, when uh, Dennis map was given and there was cessation, then uh, the fracture happened. So does uh, uh, teriparatide is a superior alternative to uh, Dennis map in your view or that what is, is your clinical experience? Yes, yes. My, in my view, it is much superior. In my view, see, I tell you where exactly you need to stop osteoclastic activity. Okay. Where there is an osteoporosis condition where there is osteoclastic osteoclast resorption activities lengthen. That occurs only in case of uh, steroid induced osteoporosis. Okay. So when you when you look at the the minor aspect of steroid induced osteoporosis, where because of the steroid the osteoclastic time is increased. Now that can be brought down to normal by biphosphonate. Okay. I don't know so well. So that is in my opinion only one condition where there is a real time abnormal increase in the length of osteoclastic time and where we are going to use this. Otherwise, we, we have to be very careful that we try to avoid. Do you know, as I told you that when it, it is withdrawn, we have to be very careful. So many times now, People are, I mean, surgeons are using both together. So they use dinosaur as well as teriparatide. Yes. Uh, so, sir, uh, in your actual clinical practice, how long a uh, patient uh, required to be treated uh, with uh, teriparatide and an average? Yes, and an average uh, uh, in my practice, it is three months to nine months. Okay. Do you know, I do not go beyond that. Now, what okay. is required is how can there be a bone regeneration or strengthening of bone with only one which is a stimulator? Patient need to get calcium, vitamin D3, food, exercise, stimulation, weight bearing exercise. So teriparatide is something which you are buying time till your other uh, measures are working. So you do not depend. Patient remains bad ridden for five years and you go on Terry for five years. It is of no sense. So what you are doing is you are trying to get the patient up and above to motivate him to go for a good exercise. If there is a fracture, so you get some three months, six months time till it heals. But thereafter, your aim should be that it is not something supplement like anti-hypertensive or anti-diabetic. It is not to be given. We have to go to the other measures and try to avoid any such uh, injectable medicines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, in your cases, uh, you shared about uh, the nicely managed cases of uh, hip fractures. Mm -hmm. So, uh, had you uh, also used it in uh, vertebral fractures or mm -hmm. any other fractures and how is your experience? Yes, yes. In vertebral fracture, we find out, as first as I told you, we try to find out the difference between malacia and osteoporosis. Okay. If only one or two vertebrae which has been compressed, now, if patients goes on talking, I mean, uh, giving complaint that for one month, two months, three months, he's still having a, so much of pain, that means either it is uh, not healing or there is a delayed healing going on. In those cases, the moment you give teriparatide, you see a big difference just in 20, 25 days. Okay. And, and uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, colleague, who is about two years senior to me, his mother he has now a habit. He's probably she is addicted to teriparatide. Okay. So, so there is a there is some sort of a connections between the patient's psychology and the feeling of well-being. They feel like you give me one prick and whole day I'll be very. So okay. that also is seen in a very rare case. But uh, I think I should share that this can also happen. Yes. So you have been practicing for a very long time. Now, uh, 
with uh, the change in lifestyle, even uh, males are coming up uh, with uh, osteoporotic uh, fractures or what is your experience in this journey? No, there are, there are many. There are many who are osteoporotic. So we are, uh, you know, for whatever the reason, maybe they having a tobacco or other, you know, abuses and all those uh, addictions. Where you see their total, I mean, food intake and assimilation and all those things are not good. Plus, when they are smoking, there is no good circulation. In all those cases, if you are not careful, we feel like, okay, he's working, uh, so he may not have osteoporosis. It is not the case. And we have to treat probably more energetically in those cases. And one more thing which we have found as an orthopedic surgeon, many a times with these x-rays, we are not able to 100% be sure that this is a patient of osteoporosis or not. But there is a fracture and we start drilling the bone. And with this experience, we know that how much hard I have to drill the bone. And if I find it goes very smoothly, I know this patient is having osteoporosis. So sometimes, you know, physically and practically, we find out that this bone is soft, this bone is not soft. And that is one part. And second point, which is very important, which I have not included in my talk, is the insufficiency fractures. Okay. So patients say that, Doctor, what you said, you, I do not have fracture, but I have pain just like a fracture. So when you ask them to go for MRI and you find that there is an insufficiency fractures. Now, those are the cases, even if they are male, those are the cases where there is some localized area, which is uh, a focal osteoporosis and giving rise to a instability or a uh, insufficiency fracture, which is giving rise to so much of pain that they are not able to walk. So all those things were in male also, we need to find out the incidence of osteoporosis and do all these things. Right. Sure, sir. These are very practical insights. And um, uh, I think that uh, uh, means uh, all the orthopedic surgeons who are listening to you will get benefit while treating the patients. And uh, uh, now we are towards the end of this session. So, so now let me share you one thing more. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. So, so what is very important is that we had yesterday, I mean, day before yesterday, we had a yoga day. Yes, sir. We know, yes. right? We need to find out and go to those uh, centers where there is a regular yoga going on and find out after the age of 65, 70 years of age, how many are really having osteoporosis. <clears throat> if the incidence is very low, then we know that what works we know very well that uh, sun bath and doing all this yoga and all these things is giving you a good amount of uh, bone uh, quality. So uh, sometimes we research and we try to find out from the disease patients. But there are research required from the healthy individuals. Okay. That what do they do? To remain How healthy. do they maintain? And then we'll get an extraordinary clue to add on this Terry Pratt. And what I have found in many of the companies who are supplying Terry Pratt and injection, they do not, uh, I mean, emphatically, I mean, recommend for intake of calcium and vitamin D3. Some of them, they supply free of charge along with uh, injection. But some of them, they do not know. Now, it is very important. I had two patients where patient was taking only Terry Prader. She, she was not taking calcium and vitamin D3. Now, this is a big, big uh, sort of a, uh, uh, you know, lacking. We must know that patient should take good food with calcium and vitamin D3. Then only Terry Prader is going to work. So, there is something uh, I think I should share. And uh, uh, you people have to take care of when you, when you get the patient's home visit be 100% sure that they are also consuming tablets of calcium as well as D3. Sure, sir. Very important. Sir, we at uh, Pocard believe in uh, research and uh, we are very much focused towards uh, research. Uh, and uh, these are very important things what you have shared. Uh, we will share it with our research team as well. 
and uh, we'll try to do uh, what you have suggested on these lines. And in this case, if required, we will take your guidance and help as well. So uh, now uh, I invite uh, Mr. Gautam Chakraborty, who is uh, Vice President uh, at Wokard Limited. Uh, so over to you, uh, Mr. Gautam, uh, for a of thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gauli. And uh, thanks a lot, uh, Jitwa, sir, uh, for yes. a wonderful talk on Teriparatide. Yes. I believe we uh, met just uh, 10 days back in Ahmedabad. Yes. On the molecule, and uh, yes. nicely you have captured everything. Mm -hmm. The good news is after the launching of Teritide brand, and now across India, we are getting a very good, uh, you know, response. Mm -hmm. Because at this point of time, uh, yes, you are surely said that the patient care, which mm -hmm. is mostly required, where mm -hmm. we have initiated a Bone Connect program, mm -hmm. where even. Uh, after your prescription, my people will go and explain how to take it. But uh, another agency who will give the counseling to the patient to, you know, stop the dropout. That is the most one uh, factor uh, where the dropout of the therapy, you know, it uh, it is uh, been seen in uh, Teddy Pair, which we are trying to block through this mm -hmm. bone. Number two, mm -hmm. yes, come into the biologics a bit late. But I assure to you mm -hmm. and uh, Rare Orthopedic uh, Society that uh, we are uh, contemplating even uh, the further biologics abeloparatide. The moment mm -hmm. it is going to be patented, uh, we will be definitely looking forward and launch abeloparatide uh, followed by teriparatide. And mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the biologics also will be contemplated. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your talk. To mm -hmm. everybody. Thanks to the ortho tv platform i wish everybody along with you sir a very very wonderful uh, weekend so thank, thank you sir you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you thank thanks you. a lot sir and i also mm -hmm. thank all the attending orthopedic surgeons for taking out time and attending this program thanks to even bs uh, thanks to uh, our uh, internal uh, ocar team and uh, with your kind permission uh, should we close this program sir yes sir yes yes so I request Ortho TV to close this program and uh, good night and stay happy. Thank you. 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 Thank you.